Good morning, everybody, or afternoon, whatever time of day that this uh, video is going to be airing. It's morning now while I film this. Um, and of course, this is day five of our 30 day shadow work challenge. Um, before we get into the topic at hand, just a quick favor. Um, as most of you know, my channel is heavily shadow banned, which means we must be doing something right. So if you guys would do me a big favor and continue to like and share these videos just to help to get these messages out, especially when I have guests on. Um, a lot of the guests that I'm bringing on through this Shadow Work Challenge have really important messages. We've had Shanti, Emmy, Stephanie. I'll put all those links down in the description box below. Anything that's going to help humanity feel whole again and go through that dark night of the soul and know that it's okay to feel the pain. Um, and to move through that, which is going to in return heal people and get our vibration to rise collectively to get us out, uh, out of this situation we find ourselves in as a planet. All right. So with that being said, today is day five and it's Saturday. Now I told the support group this morning on Signal, which if you're not on the Signal support group, I'll put a link to that in the description box as well too. So you can join us over there. There's also lots of people are there. It's awesome. Everybody is totally helping each other through this and lots of humor as well. But um, I told the support group this morning on Signal that I picked Saturday as your rest day for a particular reason. As I've said before, this whole challenge, a lot was put into this from a place of knowledge and education on my part. And so Saturday is Saturday because it is the day of the planet Saturn. Now, we talk a lot about the planet Saturn on this side of this spiritual war we're in, and I've said it hundred times and I'll keep saying it until we understand that darkness can't create anything only the light can so everything that the bad guys have used it's been an inversion of what God actually created so God created the planet Saturn and so part of what our healing process for humanity is bringing that planet back to its original template. And so the planet of Saturn is really the planet of karma. And so what does that mean? It's father time. Um, it's kind of like the wise old man with the long beard, you know, um, the elder. Um, it's also the planet of the matrix. And there is a good element to the matrix. So not all matrix stuff is bad. You know, you can look at the organization of life. So getting up, taking a shower, going out and doing things, that's all matrix stuff. You know, so within spirituality, there is an element of that. And that's what Saturn is responsible for. Um, and so we, we rest in traditional yoga. We rest on Saturdays because of that. Um, because it is the planet of karma, it is the day of reflection, right? Again, I think most of us on this channel understand karma isn't what we really think it is in the West. It's more, it's just your work. It's just action and reaction, right? That's all it is. And so it's a day to reflect. And that is why we rest on Saturday so that you can take your body and your mind in, into a, a place of just reflection and just being, right? Feeling the sensation of the soreness from the week, observing the emotions that are coming up from the work you've been doing. Um, I've, I, people have been saying that they felt really, really relaxed after the oil bath last night. I was hoping you would feel relaxed after the oil bath last night. Um, and I, I want to also say, and I know this was discussed in the signal group and Catherine also can speak a lot about this. So when I talk about the oil bath being a detox from inflammation, you don't have to worry about too much coming out. This is a homeopathic treatment, all right? Yes, there are some homeopathic treatments where you can ingest castor oil, especially if you're like constipated. I've done that before. Don't really suggest using castor oil for that, but again, you do you. But when you're just applying it to your skin, it's literally just pulling out inflammation in the, in the fascia. And it is going to calm you down. And so for all of those that were saying, oh my God, I feel so felt so relaxed after the oil bath. Amazing. I'm so happy that you, you discovered that. Um, and so as you move forward, you can start to gauge when you want to take these oil baths for how long you want to take these oil baths. Um, a little bit later on, I am going to share a video later on this week of uh, how to make a castor oil pack, 
which is another um, healing modality, a uh, homeopathic healing modality you can use for like knee issues, elbow issues, shoulder issues to help you along your journey, right? And all these things, the cold showers, the castor oil baths, the um, even the exercise triggering the emotion, none of these things are solutions to the problem, but there are tools to help you work through the problem. Okay. And so usually the problem is asymptomatic. Usually it's something coming from the mind. Okay. And so these things are just tools you, you, you use daily along the way, right? Especially the exercise, the daily tool you use to cleanse yourself, to observe yourself, to see what is going on with you psychologically, because the body doesn't lie. The ego can lie to you. The brain can lie to you, but the body will never lie to you. And so that is why we use modalities like exercise as a way for spiritual healing. That is why all the old spiritual religions had exercise involved in them is because our ancestors knew this. Yeah, they knew this. So, um, and so I think a lot of you are starting to observe that. Now let's look at your day today as a, just because it's a rest day doesn't mean that you don't have work to do. Of course you do. So Saturday, November 5th, rest day from exercise, sleep in an extra hour. If you can, I hope some of you guys got a chance to sleep in a little bit. If two hours, you know, we just don't want to like sleep all day unless we're really sick or, or we really are having an emotional breakdown, then maybe you can spend more of the day in the bed, but we want to be careful, not, especially if you are, are more COPPA oriented, not to trigger laziness, right? So self-study Saturday. So today you're going to be researching the doshas, Pitta Vata Kappa. Take notes in your journal about each dosha. What time, what are the times of day associated with dosha? How does this affect your day? Hint, this is why you've been going to bed before 10 p.m. during this challenge. And I said this yesterday in our video, and I have so I'm so happy that so many people are super interested in the doshas. Studying the doshas changed my life changed my life. I'll tell you guys a story. I don't know if I've told you guys this story ever. So I'm sure my mom could talk about this in the comment section. When I was in the second grade, so what, I was like eight years old. Um, and I don't know why I specifically remember it being the second grade, but it was the second grade. I remember waking up every night, middle of the night, throwing up. And my parents could not figure out what was going on. I'd be fine all day. And then the middle of the night, I would start throwing up. And um, they took me to my pa pediatrician and my pediatrician sent me to a specialist, um, a colon specialist for kids at Scottish Rite Hospital here in Atlanta. And they ran all sorts of tests to try to figure out what was going on. And, you know, they were like, just don't give her milk. Like they didn't really, they couldn't really see what was going on with my stomach to cause me to have that kind of a reaction. Interesting though, that was the time I found out I had an extra urinary tube, which is very common for RH negatives. Um, it was during an ultrasound to look at my colon. They saw I had two urinary tubes on one side and one urinary tube on the other. That's the tube that goes through your kidney to your bladder. Very common for RH negatives to have some extra organs, but you know, but anyway, um, now, looking back at this, I, I know as an adult what was going on. I've always had very bad digestion problems. And I am vata, pitta as my doshas. And I'm also, again, RH negative. So I have a double whammy here. I, I don't, I'm very dry. Like, I never, I've never struggled with, like, breakouts, anything like that. Because my skin is very dry, very vata. And my colon is also very dry. And on top of that, RH negatives also have a, are, had the propensity to, to struggle with like colon digestion issues. So that's what was happening to me when I was um, in the second grade. And, and, and it's not my parents' fault. They just didn't know. So, you know, we're raised with this idea of there are certain healthy foods and then there's unhealthy foods. But that's not what Ayurveda is telling us at all. All food is, is energy. And different foods are going to hold different uh, dispositions of energy, just like different people are going to hold different dispositions of energy. Now, both of my parents are Pitta Kappa. My sister and I are both Vata Pitta. And so, you know, for my mom and my dad, eat, like we used to get apples with peanut butter as, as a snack as kids, which, of course, parents thought that was healthy. And it's very tasty. But for my mom that wouldn't upset her stomach because she is more kappa. 
And so the apple, that raw apple is vata. So as a kappa, she needs that raw apple. She needs that vata energy to balance her kappa and her pitta because pitta is fire. But for me as a leading dosha vata, eating that raw apple, my body went into hyperdrive and it did not know what to do with it. And so it it would hold it. It would hold the food all day. And then at night, it would just reject it. So between 10 p.m. and 2 a.m. is pitta time. And so during that time, that's when people get sick a lot because the energy of the world is able to push out whatever needs to come out. So that's what was happening to me at that time is I was eating foods that my body literally could not digest. And even though from the outside world, they appeared to be healthy, they were not healthy for me. I've said this before, if I'm at a gas station, let's just say gas station, you guys know what happened to me that time with gas station grapes, you know, gas stations have like, usually have a refrigerator with like fruits, little cups of grapes. And then you have the candy aisle with Skittles, even though Skittles have a shit ton of chemicals in them for me as a Vata, it would be way better and healthier for me to eat those Skittles than eat those grapes. Cause these grapes, my body is not going to be able to digest at all. Okay. It's going to cause a ton of problems. And so I think when we start to study the doshas, we start to understand food and energy and times of day and our bodies in a very different way. That is why um, for dieting, there is not a one size fits all for dieting. I mean, people, there's some people that are really sold on this whole fruitarian type of lifestyle, not for a vata. Fruitarian diet for a vata is going to basically end up probably end up killing the vata, but a kappa could probably do it. You know, and so I also want to remind you guys that knowledge is power and knowledge protects. And so many people have been emailing me and asking me in the comment sections about what's my dosha? How can I find my dosha? Yeah, you can take those quizzes online and they, they might give you some indication of where you are on the spectrum, but they're not going to give you the full story. Of course, if you can go to an Ayurvedic doctor, fantastic. They can, I was diagnosed in India by an Ayurvedic doctor. They can look at your eyes, your tongue all sorts of other things that you can't do in a quiz. But again, knowledge is power. Knowledge protects. The more you study the doshas, the more it starts to become common sense. And so that's what I want you guys to do. I want you guys, and this, this kind of goes back to what's happening to us globally as well. I want you to take your power back. You know, I want you to start to deconstruct what you've been taught by the matrix or by the, by the controllers about nutrition, because everything you've learned from them is wrong, right? Intentionally wrong. And when you start to study, when you take time to actually study the Pitta dosha and then study the Vata dosha and then study the Kappa dosha and make notes and really start to integrate, understand what these energies are, it's going to become very simple for you. You might even be able to diagnose yourself. And so with that being said, you're going to be able then to make better choices for you. You know, I've talked about it with Stephanie a lot. I don't think she minds me saying this. So Stephanie is predominantly kappa. And so kappas typically can go long periods of time without eating and they're fine. Vatas like me will forget to eat, but we can't, we literally cannot go long periods of time without eating. In fact, for a vata, the first sign of hunger is spacing out, is losing focus, not stomach growling. By the time the stomach is growling, it's like bad news bear. You're going to like basically pass out. Now, what was happening with Stephanie is she was starting to feel like low blood sugar as a kappa, which should not be happening as a kappa. But what, what was happening is she was eating kappa foods. And so her body was holding on to the food, but not taking the nutritional value for, from the food. And so the intense need to snack was her body looking for nutrients because it was not receiving nutrients from what she was feeding it. You know, she grew up in an Italian family. And so unfortunately for her as a kappa, that Italian food is not good for her. Um, for me, it's very good for her. Not so much. And so she, when she started, which now that she's starting to work with the doshas, it's affecting her in a very positive way, right? And that's going to happen to everyone. Now, again, the dosha, this is why I do not agree with intuitive eating. Intuitive eating is, is like the biggest scam ever because you are going to crave your dosha. I crave 
raw fruits and vegetables. I crave juices, all the things that my body literally can't handle. So I have to intelligently eat instead of intuitive eating. I have to intelligently eat. So I have to know that I need to eat more copper foods in order for me to feel better. Now, this does not mean that you're never going to be able to eat the foods you can't, you're not supposed to eat for your dosha. And of course not, you know, but for me, like the more you get to understand how this energy works, the more you can better prepare. So like, if I'm going to go to a county fair or something and I want to get, you know, a caramel apple or something like that. For the whole week before then, I'll just be really careful about not ingesting too much Vata foods so that when I have that Vata food, it's not going to be as bad, if that makes sense. And so this is something that you're going to start to play with. Now, this is gearing you up for next week because next week, the start of next week, you are going to, I believe on Monday, yes, you are going to start a food journal. Now, I'm not once in this um and this challenge told you what to eat or how much to eat. There's going to come a point in the challenge where you're going to stop eating at a certain point at night. But as far as what you eat or how much you eat, I don't believe in diets. Diets are no good. Um, what I believe because diets don't, don't solve the problem, right? They don't solve the problem. They just cover up the problem. That's why with Stephanie yesterday, we were talking about crash diets. How many people have done a crash diet, lost a bunch of weight and gained it back. It's because the issue wasn't taken care of. All right. And so, with food addiction, food addictions are like any other addiction. It's covering up a wound. And so that's what you need to heal. When you heal that wound, all of a sudden the weight will stay off. When you start to understand the doshas, all of a sudden your body's going to get more acclimated with what it actually needs to survive. And so weight will start to come off. Okay. So with, um, studying for, so studying the doshas today, and I've got some links here from times I've talked about doshas with on my own channel and with Catherine Edwards. I also have Angie's channel here where she is actually cooking specific meals for doshas. So if you want to watch her recipes, you can go to her channel, make sure you're subscribed and watch, uh, the food she prepares. Okay. And then over the course of the, the rest of this challenge, you're going to journal what you eat. So what you're going to do is you're just going to eat whatever food you're going to eat. Let's say you wake up in the morning and you have, you know, scrambled eggs and some cantaloupe. So you write down, I had scrambled eggs and cantaloupe and then 30 minutes to an hour after you eat, I want you to note how you're feeling. So if you notice any gas, you should not know, you should not have gas. Okay. If you're gassy, you're eating wrong foods. I'm not, I, I don't have gas. I, I don't like I've, I've never, since I, since my dosha diet, my body does not, it so works so well when I follow the dosha diet. Most of the men I've dated in the yoga world are not gassy either because they're actually eating for their dosha too. So if you have gas, if you have a gas problem, you're, it's, it's your fault, literally, because you're eating foods that your body can't digest. And that's your body's way of telling you, I can't digest this. So, and I understand because your mind's like, well, this food is healthy. This is what the doctors told me to eat. But then my body gets gassy. It's because no, this food is not healthy for you. It's not healthy for you. And your body is talking to you. The body doesn't lie. The body's going, listen, sister, this fiber muffin that your doctor told you to eat, I can't digest this. So note it. Okay, so let's see. Scrambled eggs, cantaloupe. If I'm gassy, write that down. If if I feel tired, lethargic, write that down. Um, if I feel sometimes food allergies don't come up, don't come physically. They might come in the form of depression and anxiety. So if all of a sudden, an hour after you eat, you have a panic attack, write it down. Write it down, okay? Because this is energy. It's all just energy. On the flip side, if you have scrambled eggs and cantaloupe and an hour later, you feel fantastic and you have energy and your stomach feels good, write it down. Good to know, you know? And so over the course of this, the next, the next three weeks, you're going to be studying yourself. You're going to be studying yourself because even like for me as a Vata Pitta, our friend Shanti at Aquarius Rising Africa, she is also a Vata Pitta. However, we're different. Like no, not all Vata Pittas are going to react the same to different foods. I could have more Vata than Shanti does. So therefore I have a higher allergy to Vata foods than Shanti does. Shanti's really good at fasting. Um, I'm too Vata to fast. And so you have to find what works for you. All right. And that's what I want you to start to discover. I want you to let go of the programming 
shatter that programming that this food is healthy and this food's not. We see this a lot with going vegetarian too. Um, and of course, that's totally up to you. As I've said before, I firmly believe um, that every human being can go without meat. I don't think we were designed to eat meat. That's just my own opinion. However, um, most people in my life are meat eaters and I don't judge because it is up to you. That is your that is your path to take. But I notice a lot of people get all freaked out when they go vegetarian about this idea of protein. And it's actually a head scratcher because you, I don't know anybody that's ever struggled with protein deficiency. And if you look up most vegetables and beans, they have higher levels of protein in them than meat does. All right. So this is programming. And I know why the controllers have pushed meat on us. It's very, I mean, if we think about blood, what are they preparing us for? Right. So, um, so I would, I would, I would, I would contemplate that. And I would also think about, you know, in, in a lot of spiritual texts, it talks about how the blood is the sacred vessel. And so what does it mean when you're eating something that has blood in it that's not yours right so there's some spiritual things here we have to think about same with food and so if protein is something that we need as humans and we're not supposed to be eating meat as humans then of course god the universe is going to put protein in vegetables and beans and nuts and all those things and so you as you start to study this I don't expect anyone to go cold turkey on anything. Going cold turkey is not good. It's an easing into something. And so as you start to study this for yourself, I'm hoping that it will, things will start to click and some of this programming will start to dissolve. And so you will start to take your power back, right? And when you start to feel better in your body, it's easy to take your power back. Okay. And so that's the only reason why I'm having you do this to start this study so you can prepare for next week. Now your activity today, because you're not exercising is to do sound bowl healing. You can do this at whatever time of day you want to. So I have a link here. I want you to get comfortable, close your eyes, lay down on the bed or on the floor and allow the sound to penetrate your body. Tell your kids, Tell your husband, tell your boyfriend, girlfriend, your parents to like leave you alone for 20 minutes. Super important so your nervous system doesn't get shocked back awake. Um, and I believe it's only like 20 minutes, 15, 20 minutes. You're just going to lay down and listen to the sound bowl healing. And I want you to think about that because in this Saturday self-study, we're covering two of the three elements of Ayurveda. So the three elements of Ayurveda are food, so the dosha energy vibration, sound bowl, healing, vibration, words, sound, speaking, music. And then the last one is breath, which we're going to cover later on. So today, specifically, you're really looking at two of the main pillars of Ayurveda. And is sound bowl healing is something now, if you don't feel a lot today with sound bowl healing, you're going to have opportunities con to continue that during the week. It might not affect you on the first try. It might take a while to start to really get the vibration to really get into your body and bring things up for you. Um, if you are religious, if you grew up in a Christian uh, home, you know, in the Bible, it says God spoke the wor wor the world into existence, spoke Okay, that's vibration. And so I want you to really contemplate that. Now, if this is something that you're really super interested in, like you want to go deeper into sound bowl healing. Now, sound bowl healing does not replace exercise. It works with the exercise. Okay, it all works together. Nothing replaces something else. They all work together. Okay. But if sound bowl healing is something you're interested in, Shanti from Aquarius Rising Africa, can you provide you with more information and work with you one-on-one? -on -one? You can contact her at this email below. She is off offering 15% off a three package session. Now the sound bowl healing I have here is just a general one. It's general for, for everybody. So it's not going to be specific for you. If you work with Shanti or any other private sound bowl healing uh, provider, they're going to design the, the, the um, session for you specifically. So it's going to tap into your wounds specifically. Okay. I've done some bowl healing with Shanti. She's amazing. All right. Journal. How did the oil bath affect you from last night? Did you sleep better? What do you think about the doshas? How did the sound bowl healing feel? Did it bring up any emotions? List five things you like about yourself. Work through the three, thing, three things you listed that you needed to work on. How have confronting these three things changed your week? Um, how is confronting these 
three things changed your view on of yourself and your karma. So we, we pick those three things to work on. I don't want you to see these as your downfall. Remember your weaknesses are your treasures. They're sacred. Okay. So I'm hoping that changes your perspective on things you need to work on. So like if you struggle with weight, that's not something to be ashamed of. That's something to honor because there's a lesson there for you. If you struggle with being underweight, there's a lesson there too. If you struggle with self-doubt, if you struggle with jealousy, if you want to work on, so if you want to work on getting stronger physically, if that's one of the things you put on, I want to get stronger physically. Okay. What does that say about you emotionally? Because the physical body is just the representation of the soul. So what is your soul really asking you to do? To use a physical strength to get stronger physically so that you emotionally, mentally, spiritually get stronger. You see, you see the correlation. And so kind of, I want you to really think about that. You know, I, I think a lot of people I've noticed in the chat and on comments are really starting to think about these things in a very different way than the way we were, we were taught to think about these things. Exercise is not punishment. You get to exercise. You get to do this. You get to explore your body. Okay. And so that's something I want you to reflect on again. And then obviously uh, turn off all electronics one hour before bed. Instead, read or, uh, a book or write more in your journal. Go to bed before 10 p.m. This, out of everything, is what I've gotten the most responses on. So many people are really digging this. I've gotten so many people email me and um, talk about it and signal. Or I don't know if it was a signal they were talking about it. One of the groups was talking about how, like, oh, holy shit, they're um, able to, like, fall asleep. And stay asleep. And so this is something, but this goes again back to the doshas. 10 p.m. 10 p.m. is the marker in a pit of time. That's when it's fiery. You know, if you think about those um, batshit crazy years you had in your early 20s when you're in college. Oh, when you were crying outside of the bar because your boyfriend pit pissed you off, it was usually be between 10 p.m. and 2 a.m. Pit of time, right? Emotional time. But 6 p.m. to 10 p.m. is kappa time. That's cocooning time, okay? And then again, once again, take your uh, your salt bath tonight if you can. Uh, if you're trying to go without meat, keep continuing to try that. And drink your 64 ounces of water, two liters of water. Now, Sunday is Sunday fun day. Now, I have specifically picked certain teachers in this challenge for a reason, I'm not randomly picking these teachers. I picked Richard Simmons for a reason. Okay, I'm not going to tell you what that reason is yet. We're going to talk about it tomorrow. If you want to guess, there's actually multiple reasons why I actually picked Richard Simmons' old videos. So this is a sweat into the oldies um, for Sunday Fun Day. So maybe in the comment section, if you want to guess why I picked Richard Simmons, you can go ahead. Uh, but there's multiple reasons why I picked Richard Simmons and why I picked his particular dance videos for this challenge, even though they're old, even though they're from the 90s, the 80s and 90s. There's a reason. Okay. And we'll talk about that more tomorrow when we when we recap Sunday. But if you want to again, try to guess why you can, you can guess in the comment section below. So, um, so yeah, you're going to do a sweat into the oldies, a 60 minute Sunday, fun day, make sure to smile and have fun while you're doing this one. I know a lot of people are actually really excited about this because they know this, this was big. This is big when I was a kid. Right. And so, and Richard Simmons is just delightful anyway. So a lot of people are really looking forward to this one. Um, and then again, I'm going to have you do the sound bowl healing again on Sunday, again, tomorrow. Now, since you're exercising tomorrow, I want you to do the sound bowl healing after you work out. There's a reason. Okay. The workout even though it's a fun one, it's going to move energy. It's going to pull things up. And so after you've done that, I want you to then lie down and do the sound bowl healing and see if you have a different experience post-workout than today where you're not working out. All right. And then you're going to have questions to ask. Okay. And then we'll get into all the rest of that tomorrow. Now, one thing too, I want to ask you guys about the Saturday rest day, because this is something that I struggle with. I talk a lot um, about be people who have weight issues, because that seems to be a lot of, um, the main issue that's coming up for a lot of people is struggling with weight and that we know that that people who struggle with weight typically generally speaking have a lot of love hate relationship with exercise and all that kind of stuff and so that is why i focus so much on that because a lot of people are kind of struggling with that and so that is why i i really want to shift the attention i think there for a lot of people generally speaking who are overweight 
maybe were overweight as children have some um, triggers from like being the fat kid at school and the emotional implications and the, you know, the, the athletes, you know, being triggered by that. And so that's a trigger they're working through and seeing exercise in a different way. Um, but the flip side of that, people like myself, I have the propensity to over-exercise. I have the propensity to do too much. And so this is a question I'm going to ask for the people on this challenge who are like me. How is your rest day triggering you? For me, I have a hard time with rest days. Um, I look for, the night before, I always look forward to it. But then in the day of the rest, I'm, I'm, I'm agitated and I want to exercise. And so for those who struggle with that, how is rest part of the process for you? Because it is part of the process. Yeah. All right, guys, I'm going to be um, heading off to Arabia Mountain a little bit later. I'm going to be turning my electronics off and just kind of enjoying the day with friends and my dog. So um, I hope you guys are having a wonderful day. We had Tamara this morning. I'll put those links down in the description box below in case you missed her this morning. And yeah, let me know how you're doing. I'll talk to you soon. Bye.